Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about the named access list. Now this is not a new type of access list. In other words, it's not a third type in addition to the extended and the standard access lists. Rather, it's an enhancement to both of those. So we still have the standard and we still have the extended, but now they're known as named standard or named extended access lists generally just referred to as a named access list. So what I mean is all of the matching abilities that we've talked about so far for both of those two types of access lists, we still have those. It's just a different way to configure them. So let's look at the two enhancements. The first one's obvious. We're going to start using a name instead of a number to identify an access list. And there's, I gotta tell you, there's a great convenience factor when you do this. You can look at an access list and if you're good about your naming conventions, right off the bat you'll know what that access list is for just by the name alone. So it's very helpful. The second enhancement is we can now edit individual lines within an access list. If you remember standard and extended access lists, you cannot edit individual lines. You have, you have to either delete the entire thing or, or keep it. Well now we have a lot more uh, flexibility in managing access lists. Now the structure of the named access list is a little bit different than what we've talked about so far. When you configure one, you start off by using the command IP access list. So right off the right off the bat it's a little bit different. We used to start an extended or standard just by saying access list. Well now it's IP access list. Right after that, instead of putting a number there, we're just going to tell the router this is either an extended or it's a standard access list. After we choose one of those two, then we create a name, and this name is anything you want it to be. So this very first line here, all you're really doing is you're just creating the access list, and you would enter that line. As soon as you do that, you're then placed into the access list configuration mode. So you're kind of, you're moved inside that access list, and then that's where you start configuring your permit and your, and your deny statements. And you don't have to keep repeating the access list name or that it's extended or standard because you're already within that particular access list. So you would just go ahead and create all of your statements until you're done. We're going to go ahead now and jump on a router and see how this is actually configured. Okay, we begin by jumping into configuration mode and we issue the IP access list command. And then we have to choose extended or standard. I like the matching capabilities of the extended, so I'm going to go with that. And then I need a name. Well, it's a good idea to name your access list um, so that you know what it's doing. What, what function does it serve on your network that you can easily learn just by looking at the name. So for instance, I'm going to name this stop www because I want to block a few users from getting to websites by using this access list. So I hit enter, and as soon as I do that, look at the command prompt. It's changed from global configuration mode into access list configuration mode. So now we're inside the stop www extended access list. And now we're ready to go ahead and start issuing our individual statements. So let's start by choosing a few users. And I'll just add a few in here, a few random ones. Now because the implicit deny is also uh, going to happen at the end of a, a named access list, just like the extended and the standard access lists, I need to go ahead and address that. So at the end, I'll let everyone else all other types of IP traffic, regardless of source and destination, be allowed to pass this access list. So let's take a look at the configuration now. Here you can see the access list. And it looks pretty much just like we configured it. Uh, the name and the type of access list is only stated once at the top. And then all of the individual commands are indented and listed right below it. Okay, so 
it's fairly simple, and in fact, some ways it's easier than having to configure your basic standard and extended access lists. There's actually less typing involved. Now we're still in access list configuration mode because the prompt tells us we are there. Let's say we now want to enable 192.168.1.5 to go ahead and reach any web server they want. Well the beauty here is simply identifying the line you entered but issue the no statement in front of it and hit enter and we've removed that line. So if we take a look at the running configuration now, you can see that single line has been removed. Everything else remains the same. So that, uh, that flexibility in editing the access list is so convenient and it's, it's such a time saver. Um, that's one of the great benefits of using a named access list. Okay? Okay, well to summarize what we covered, we now know we have the IP access list command in order to create a named access list. Once we create it, then we're free to go ahead and issue all of our permit and our deny statements. So basically with a named access list, we're still creating extended or standard access lists, but now we use a name to refer to them, not numbers. The great benefit to doing this, in addition to an, an easily recognizable access list by the name, is that we can now go back into it and delete single statements within an access list without deleting the entire access list. Okay, so that's it. That is the named access list. Thanks for watching.